Yep. All right, here we go. More integration problems. Let's start with this guy, integral cosine 2x dx. So this one we would do with a linear u, right? So this is the shortcut one. So I would do this as, hey, I have cosine of stuff here. So do I know a function whose derivative is cosine stuff? And the answer should be yes. It's going to be sine of stuff times 1 over the derivative of stuff, right? So the derivative of 2x is 2. So 1 over that would be 1 over 2. And then plus c. So our final answer here would be one half sine of two x plus c. All right, that's the way you should be able to do it. Uh, if that's not making sense here, let's do it the long way. So if I have the integral of cosine of two x dx, right, we could let u equal two x. So du would be two dx. But remember, we want to get rid of that constant by multiplying both sides. In this case, by a half. So a half du equals dx. And so now this dx right here, well, that's one half du. This right here, well, that's cosine u. So when I rewrite this integral, I have the integral of cosine u times a half du. But of course, I can pull the half out. And so I get the integral of cosine of u du. Do I know a function whose derivative is cosine u? You do. It's going to be sine u. And then since it's an indefinite integral, right, plus c. Uh, and technically, I can put this in parentheses and distribute the half to the c, but c is a constant. So a half c is also a constant, so you don't have to do that. So this is what you get. And then obviously, we know what u is, right? So I can back substitute here and say I get one half sine of, put 2x in for u, one half sine of 2x plus c, all right? And that's exactly what we got here. Right? And again, the reason why we can do this, I can think of this as stuff, almost like the reverse chain rule. There is no reverse chain rule, by the way, but I can think of it this way when my u, when my stuff is linear. And I'll always multiply by 1 over the derivative of stuff because think about it. You take the derivative of like ax, if a is a constant, something linear, you're always going to get that coefficient right there. And then when you go to clean this up to get what dx equals, you're always going to multiply by 1 over that. That's where this comes from right here. So it kind of makes sense where this comes from. All right, but this is how quickly you need to be able to do it. You're not going to do a u substitution, uh, you know, show all the work. You're going to, you know, you're going to know that it's a linear u shortcut and you're going to do that in your head. All right, so let's move on to the next problem. So you take a look at this and you're like, all right, how do I do that? There's nothing linear about this guy. Um, a fraction. I mean, is it, you know, is a normal u substitution going to work here? It doesn't look like it, right? If I had sine x in the numerator, then a u sub would work because I'd be able to let u equal cosine x, but I don't have that. Uh, so all of the things that we've done so far, you know, are the crazy techniques seem like they're not going to work, but maybe I shouldn't overthink this, right? Maybe I should be like, well, what is this equal to, right? What's the trig identity here? So I can rewrite this, right? One over cosine squared, that's equal to can't square. And so now it's, oh, wait a minute. Do I know a function whose derivative is secant squared x? And you do, right? It's tangent x. So then you're just going to do tan x plus c. So that one was just straight up, hey, use an identity to rewrite it. And then now it made it more recognizable to you, right? A function whose derivative that you knew. All right. So if I took the derivative of this family of functions, I would get secant squared x, which is obviously one over cosine squared x. So that's a quick one. That's an easy one. Let's take a look at this guy. So you might be thinking, since we most recently did integration by parts, that, oh, I'm going to do this one using integration by parts. But that really shouldn't be the, your flow, right? You should first try and do other methods, maybe less complicated methods, right? And the less complicated method here is to let u equal x squared. So just a standard u sub, because then du would be 2x dx. And I don't see a 2. So I can do what I just did two seconds ago, multiply both sides by a half. And now think about it. Here's your x dx, and we now know what that's equal to. That's equal to one half du. So this stuff right here, that's going to be one half du. And then this right here, well, that's going to be cosine of u, right? Because I let u equal x squared. So I can rewrite this now, and I'm going to have, let's see here, and I'm going to pull the half out, right? We're getting good at these. Let's pull the half out right now. One half integral, and it looks like I'm just going to have cosine of u du, right? And everything is accounted for. So now, all right, do I know a function whose derivative is cosine u? I certainly do. It's sine u, right? 
don't forget that half. Don't forget your plus C because it's an indefinite integral. And then you're like, all right, well, what is U? Got a back substitute, final little step. U is equal to X squared. And this is what I get, all right? Don't forget what you're finding. You're finding a family of functions differing by a constant such that if you took the derivative of this, you would get this, right? And, you know, maybe for kicks and giggles, let's just check that. Let's go ahead and check it. So let me take the derivative with respect to x of my answer, right? So this is just good derivative practice as well. So derivative of sum, sum of the derivatives, the derivative of c, that's just going to be zero, derivative of constant zero. The derivative of a constant times a function, that's going to be the constant times the derivative of the function. Now take the derivative of this, that's composition. I have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of sine of stuff is going to be cosine of stuff times the derivative of stuff, right? And that's what I would get. And so you can see the half and the two, they're going to cancel. I can throw the x out in front. I'm going to get x cosine of x squared, and that's exactly what this is, right? So this is a family of functions differing by constant, such that if I took the derivative of it, I got what I started with, okay? All right, let's take a look at this, guys. You're like, oh, it's a very similar problem. I mean, look at these two. Very similar, all right? The only difference is a normal u sub is not going to work here, right? You never want to let u equal x because that doesn't make any sense, right? Because then you just get u squared cosine u du, right? Remember, the variable in the integrand is a dummy variable, so it doesn't matter what it is. So that's a silly thing to do. You might think to let u equal x squared, but then du is 2x dx, and this is an x dx, right? This is cosine of x, right? So there's not multiplication with that x and that dx. It's cosine of x times dx. So that's not going to work. Hopefully you didn't even think that was a good idea. Uh, and so then you're like, all right, I have a product. All my easy methods fail. I certainly don't recognize the function whose derivative is that. So maybe integration by parts here, all right? So we let u equal the polynomial piece. So we have a polynomial times a trig function. So if I let u equal x squared, dv has got to be everything else. So it's going to be cosine of x dx. And I immediately figure out that du would be 2x to the 1 dx. And v, a function whose derivative is cosine x, is going to be sine x. Now, you don't do the multiply both sides by a half here when you're doing integration by parts, right? That's out the door. This is a different way of, of doing an integral. So now, what have we done? We have now represented this integral as the integral of u dv, right? And we know that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. You might be thinking, what in God's name is that? That is your integration by parts formula, which by the way was derived from the product rule for differentiation. So now I'm just going to apply it here. So if I do that, I'm going to get u times v, so that's going to be x squared sine x, minus the integral of v du. So this times this, that has a 2 in it. 2s can get pulled through, so I'll do that. And I get x sine x dx. And when you do this integration by parts, you look at this integral here and you say, hey, did it get better? So here's my integral, integral of x sine x. Is it better than what I started with? And it certainly is, right? This guy is better. Still not you know, completely doable, but it's better. So you're like, all right, well, what would I do with this product? Well, you're going to do this again. All right, so you're going to do integration by parts one more time. So I'm going to let u, although I'll call it u dot, since I already have u defined over here, u dot equal x, dv dot, it's got to be the rest of this stuff, sine x dx, du dot is going to be 1 dx, and v dot, a function whose derivative is sine x, got to be careful here, is going to be negative cosine x, right? Because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and so a negative negative gives you a positive. Do a little uh, sanity check, right? Your du has to have a dx. Your dv has to have a dx, right? Always check that. It does. The other ones don't. So we're good to go. So now uh, what do I got going on here? Well, let's see. So let me rewrite all of this stuff. I don't want to forget that. x squared sine x and then minus 2 times what I'm going to get when I apply parts to this integral. So I'll do that in red, right? So that's going to be uv. So that's going to be negative x cosine x minus the integral of v du. Now I'll pull the negative out, so that'll make that plus. And then v du, that's just going to be cosine x dx. And then again, you look at this integral and you say, okay, that, that's definitely a lot nicer, right? This one I can actually do. So let me take my time here. Let me first distribute 
this 2. That's a common error. People forget to distribute this negative 2. So negative 2 times negative that is going to be positive 2x cosine x, and then minus 2 integral of cosine x dx. And now I can do that integral, right? So I'm going to get x squared sine x plus 2x cosine x. And then a function whose derivative is cosine x, that's going to be sine x. So I'm going to get minus 2 sine x, right? Minus 2 is just the constant, and then plus c. And that's my final answer. All right, so pretty cool stuff. So this is a family of functions differing by a constant such that if I took the derivative of this, which by the way, I'd have to use the product rule here and I'd have to use the product rule there, I would eventually get something that simplifies to just x squared cosine x. So maybe not a bad thing for you to do. Go ahead and take the derivative of this, practice your derivative schools, uh, derivative rules and schools, uh, and see if you get that, see what happens. All right, four solid little questions. Video number two, done.